Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with day four of our Capture One portrait tutorial series, where we'll be retouching this picture of Carly in Capture One without using Photoshop at all. So this portrait series has covered uh, three previous steps, and we're going to go through them, but uh, your layer stack should look something like this. And if you have not done so, I highly recommend you view the previous series and be comfortable with the contents of those. If you don't have an image, this, uh, this photo of Carly is available as a raw download uh, using the link below so you can follow along. And she would greatly appreciate that because part of the proceeds go to her and she's pregnant with twins. So we'll actually maybe be doing some retouching of other uh, maternity images of her as well. Uh, so to cover what we've done so far, we haven't done anything in Photoshop and we are still in the raw file. So uh, all of you non-believers out there, there you go. It's still in the Sony raw. Uh, so the first thing we did, and I'm going to briefly grow, I'm going to zoom right through these. We did a healing layer, uh, which just basically covers things that need to be retouched. And you can see there's a few spots here and there uh, for things like stray hairs and so on, just using the healing tools inside of Capture One. And then we did a clone and clones. Uh, we did a lot, of, a lot of those. We only had one here in the tear duct. Uh, where we needed to remove something that the healing brush just wasn't handling well. Uh, but the idea here is to cover all the tools so you get a comfort level with them, even though we probably could have done that a thousand different ways. I wanted to make sure we included the clone tool in this series. Then we did my wacky dodge and burn method, uh, which is a little bit different, I think, than a lot of other people teach it. So we removed any lighter areas. You kind of want to use these evenly, uh, if possible. So you can see that we did indeed knock some areas down over here. Uh, those areas are here. And then we did a lighten, which is the one I do the most of. And I think most people have a propensity to want to, to dodge and lighten the image more than, than to burn it. Uh, so you see here, that was a pretty significant jump. And if hit M on my keyboard, you can see where those marks were. Then we fixed some color and some saturation issues that can occur uh, in the skin to kind of even it out a bit. And then uh, we were doing some other things here. And we might actually come back to color later on because there's some things we can do, but there is also a limitation to what Capture One is meant to do. And we can't paint with colors per se. I mean, we can trick the product into doing so. And I am bending the product quite a bit and I think the way that it's supposed to be used, but it is also not Photoshop, right? It is a raw processor that has some good editing tools that we are kind of abusing. Just keep that in mind that this is probably the harder way to do it and Photoshop would probably be a bit easier, uh, but the result would be similar, I feel. Um, although I must say that dodging and burning inside of Capture One is pretty cool because we don't get all the discoloration that we would if we did it with non-raw data. So we're gonna talk about today is a pretty funky technique I have for brightening the skin and making it look just a lot more interesting. Uh, so what we have so far is pretty great, but we can greatly improve upon this. Now there's two methods that we're gonna use for this type of dodging and burning. And this is uh, unlike what we did before, which is more corrective. Today we're going to be doing more of a stylistic or artistic, and we're gonna cover two different methods for two different things. They're not mutually exclusive. They do completely different things. So uh, please watch the whole video. Otherwise you're gonna be lost when we get to the next one. Both of these, uh, well, this, this first technique is Pretty weird. Again, if, you, if you've been following us so far, you've been like, what is he doing? He's doing some weird stuff with the product. But in the end, I have to, I'd have to say that I'm pretty happy with the results. And if you're following along so far, you probably are as well. This is another one of those aha moments. This is one of those techniques you're going to walk away with and go, well, I'm going to use that all the time, aren't I? Yes. And you can do it in Photoshop as well. But again, doing it in RAW works better. So the goal here is to take what the camera perceives is the brightest parts of the image. Uh, obviously, we know what that is by looking at this and using the curve like we did before to dodge and burn, but let's let the computer figure that out. Let's let the raw processor decide what is the darkest and lightest parts. But what I wanna do is take the lightest parts and brighten them even more. This will add more depth to the image and add a shine to the skin. So to do that is actually pretty easy. Create a new field adjustment layer and then go up and we're gonna rename this thing and we're gonna call it uh, shine. And I'm gonna call this one because we're gonna do two layers of this and they both have different reasons for existing. Uh, but the first one is uh, where we're gonna start. And the technique is the same. Uh, so we're gonna to go to Lumarange 
And that's the secret. We're going to push this all the way to white. And then we're going to bring the black one over and we're going to go to maybe about a quarter of the image range and give it a bit of a, a, a blend. So this is saying I want everything from pure white to this part. And we can click display mask if you know what I'm looking at here. And then this is the blur of it. So if you put it right here, for example, then it's a straight line and not a very nice gradient to the edge. So I say about a quarter and then kind of blur the edge a bit. So something like this and hit apply. Now this mask is now applied. We hit M, we can see it. And what I want to do is I want to take exposure. I want to push it up just a bit. This technique adds that little bit of shine to the skin. It's just so good. A little bit of a refreshing look to it. And that has taken, uh, I think, a significant step forward in the way that the image looks to me. Anyway. And then I want to do it again. So I'm going to do this new field adjustment layer. We're going to call this one Shine 2. We're going to do the same thing, but uh, we're going to make a much smaller range. So we're going to come all the way over here and do just the very brightest stuff. So you can see this is just the tip of the nose and maybe a bit of the cheek, things like this. These are areas that I would normally dodge and burn uh, stylistically anyway. So using this, and again, increase exposure a little bit. The difference between doing it here and doing it in Photoshop is again, we are working with the raw data. So we get a much better result because it's pure data. It hasn't been rendered out to Photoshop. Okay, after we've made that adjustment, we need to kind of fix the saturation of the skin because we're starting to kind of bleach it out a bit. So I'd go back to Shine 1 and go to our color and color balance tool. And I'd probably pick like the mid-tone. And what I would do is I would add some color into that area. So just, and you see if I do it extremely here, you can kind of see what we're doing. We're adding just a bit of color back into that. And I would probably do it extreme until you find the, the tone you like, and then you just use this control here to pull it back so it's not insane. Then I would do the same thing with Shine 2. I would go, I would find a tone that adds uh, a little bit of color to these super highlighted areas that we have. And this one is not as noticeable because it's not as much color. Um, so I may just leave it a little higher than that. Uh, but what this does is make sure that we don't have a pure white highlight, for example, on the nose. So if we go and print this, it won't look odd. So that should give us a pretty significant step up in a lot of the tonality of the skin and the three dimensionality of the portrait. So I like this technique a lot, and the fact that we can do it in RAW in Capture One is amazing. So as with all the things we've covered so far, remember you can always go back and reduce the opacity of the effect if it's too much, if you found it over the top. But again, it's one of those things that, uh, just like all the tools inside of Capture One or Photoshop for that matter, the nuances and the details are really what matter. So try not to push things too far and make them too gritty, but bringing them back a bit so they look natural is really the goal. And I think this is a pretty nice step up from what we had today when we started because it adds that dimensionality and shape to the skin. Now for the last part of this, I want to do more of a stylistic dodge and burn. So I would go and create again a new layer. I'm going to create a filled adjustment layer. I'm going to call this uh, style D and B. And similar to what we did before, I'm going to go back to exposure and I'm just going to add one stop to that. And what I want to do is that I want to invert that mask. Um, I could have done that the other way and I probably should have not created a filled layer, but you get the idea. We just basically have a layer without a mask on it at all that is one stop overexposed. So now I'm going to take a brush. And what I want to do here is I want to go over parts of the image that I feel could use a little bit of a bump in exposure. And it's not so much that we're correcting something, it's more that we're adding a shape. Uh, one of the favorite places I like to do this is the Cupid's bow here, or the, the fabled snot trough is, the, I think, the medical term for it. Uh, we're going to use the, the brush here. And what I want to do is I basically just want to take and add a little bit of shine on either side of this. And again, you can overdo this, uh, don't overdo this. To add fullness to lips, for example, you would go over just over the top of the lip here a little bit and uh, maybe across the center of this lip. And then you would do the opposite. You would burn in just a bit inside here to darken it, not over the teeth, 
I just lowered the lips. Now I'm not going to do that to her because she has very full lips and would look a little odd. Um, but I also like to do this again on the nose, just a bit here. And it really is up to you as to the parts that you would like to feature. And um, I like to do it uh, over the, the liquid line on the, on the eye. And uh, I also like to do it in the catch light. So I'll oftentimes pop the catch light a little bit just to make it a little more interesting. And another thing that I like to do here is if you've ever taken an oil painting class, and you're going to hear me harp about that a lot if you've ever heard me speak in real life at a convention or something, I'm a huge fan of all photographers taking an art class because there's so much you can learn. There's a huge amount of years of experience out there on how to make a portrait in the painting world. Why would we not use that experience as photographers? So during your COVIDcation, if you have a chance, sign up for an art class. Take uh, like paintable.cc is a really good one. Uh, there's a bunch of really good ones out there and you can learn a lot about painting. Uh, but one of the things that you're going to hear them talk about is what they call the moon of the eye. And that's where the light would hit the, the cornea of the eye here and uh, or the lens of the eye and then light would go into the pupil. But not all of it does. Some of it hits this side of the iris here. Uh, so there's a shape that's like a moon. It's like, uh, let me uh, over exaggerate it here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. It would look like this with a dot in the middle. Uh, so that is the shape we're drawing, but we're not going to draw it uh, like we just found out about it and make it Captain Obvious. We want to do, again, subtlety. So a little bit bigger brush, and I'm just going to make a little bit of a sweep here with a little dot. And same thing. And it's the opposite of the catch light where the light would hit the iris of the eye. And remember, do this on your own, on an own layer. In fact, I typically do the eyes on a separate layer as well. Because if I do go overboard, then I can always pull those back a bit. So here's the difference there between that. And you can see I did it all in the same layer with the, the other kind of stylistic dodge and burn I was doing uh, because I'm comfortable with it. But I would tell you that doing it on its own layer is not a bad idea, just for the eyes. So again, if we do a before and after here, you can see we have a pretty substantial difference. And all we have done so far is brighten, darken for the most part, and correct a few pixels here and there. But for the most part, this is her original skin with the original pores and the original hairs and everything else that looks realistic. Uh, but yet we have, I think, what looks like a much cleaner portrait. In the next episode, we're going to focus on color grading the image and a couple other stylistic changes that I'd like to make at the end to kind of add some pop. Again, we're just trying out all the different tools and applying them to this one image, even if maybe they don't need it. But so you get a chance to try them and get comfortable with them. So if you've appreciated this so far, uh, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. What has been your favorite part? And if there's been an aha moment, uh, what has it been and has it affected you at all? Um, let me know. And everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.